Welcome to the Bitcoin Source, your ultimate destination for everything Bitcoin. I have a special guest here today. Super excited to have this conversation. Ivan, before we kickstart things off, could you briefly introduce yourself to the world and to the audience? Hi, thanks for having me. I'm Ivan Makedonski, coming from Bulgaria, and I am chief of staff at Breeze, which is a lightning company. Nice, nice, nice. So Ivan, I want to get into kind of the introduction to Bitcoin in, in your journey. You know, your journey into Bitcoin or the Bitcoin ecosystem is both unique and inspiring. Could you share the story of how a personal tragedy led you to discover Bitcoin and what aspect of it resonated with you during the most trying times of, of your journey? I would say that my story uh, didn't really lead me to Bitcoin, but it primed me to understand it on a very deep level. And what I talk about is that in 2008, uh, we experienced a financial crisis, but uh, a lot of people didn't realize the secondary effects, including me. Uh, one of the effects that it took is because of the financial problems, the main earner in my family was my mother. She was a business lady and uh, my father actually worked in the company, helping her out here and there. But uh, really, uh, he wanted things uh, and she provided them. But uh, in 2008, when she had to budget and stuff like that, uh, he got irritated, things escalated, uh, and over, I would say, six years, uh, it got to the point where my mother said, I want a divorce. And in his psychological mind, uh, he said, okay, I'm going to kidnap and kill. And because of that, uh, all the implications after that, event uh, fall onto my shoulders, how I have to deal with all the assets that I had no idea, first of all, what they are, what is the setup, what are the laws. Uh, on the other side, I have an 11 years younger sister that I became the parents for her. Uh, I had to take custody and all sorts of implications on that. And why I say that I'm primed? Uh, about this because I was dealing with all the problems in the fiat system around the property rights. Because everything that my mother built, I saw how different people uh, just took advantage of the situation, robbing me and my sister of what we were supposed to inherit for anything that uh, was my mother's will, how the laws are not protecting us but they are set some random stuff that are really not to our benefit, but somebody's benefit. Uh, other people, uh, like bankers, not giving us access, even though there was like all sorts of things. And what I say that your will is not your will, uh, but your will in the fiat system is what the state allows it to be. And when I stumbled onto Bitcoin, I was resisting it for years, uh, I would say. But when I finally capitulated and I said, I'm going to study and prove that this is a scam, uh, it was uh, over three days, I found out that, yes, I was right for everything crypto, but the Bitcoin thing was different. And when I heard the Jason Lowry's thesis about power projection, and when I connected his thesis to my experience, now everything clicked. And I know that uh, other people will have much worse stories than mine. And because of the future uh, financial crisis, whether it's hyperinflation, whether it's a debt deflation, whatever it is, it will push the bad individuals from humanity to do stuff like uh, my psychopathic father did. And that's why uh, it is my responsibility to shed the light that it's not about the fucking money. Money is just a tool that is coordinating all of us. And when you manipulate that, it has very emotional, big and uh, it's not just about the numbers on the screen um, and you lost a house or you lost anything. Uh, can anybody put a price on the people that actually died 
because of my situation. And I'm just one example. I bet that there are millions more. And uh, that's why uh, when I connected that to my story, my, my experience, I said, I have to. It's not that I want to, but I have to work in this because I'm in the unique position to really understand. Yes, that's that's an awesome journey. And um, I think that a lot of people can learn things from your experience because, you know, a lot of people... Um, especially like in, you know, the Western world, they complain about things or they find themselves in financial bindings that a lot of people just think are, you know, so detrimental and they can't even compare to some of the experiences people have had, such as yourself. And uh, it's just beautiful to see that Bitcoin can really um, turn people's narrative around, even in the midst of tragedy. So um, I commend you and respect you for sharing that part of your story, Ivan. Yeah, thanks. And absolutely. Uh, the first world, when you lost money, uh, they just played the game of let's uh, shuffle money um, between stocks, bonds, uh, this currency, that currency. This is just shuffling money between uh, inferior money. Bitcoin is the only superior money uh, and it will prove over time. But uh, it is just that all those implications are going to go to society and all those uh, use cases of what money is and how the fiat system is screwing us really deeply are going to pop up more and more because you cannot un-orange peel me. The same way that uh, you cannot un-orange peel somebody that uh, has their unique case. But uh, again, this will take time. Uh, and I say, even though we lost a lot, uh, me and my sister, uh, I talk about this uh, specific instance. For me, it was the most important thing that we have to go through this period. Because even if we protect all the assets that come to us, and then we die or we get killed or we... Uh, destroy or like whatever it would be in vain and the human life and human flourishing can be uh, on the fast lane with bitcoin and that's why uh, i'm so glad we are still so early and now you can just decide i'm going to live my life and even though i lost a lot of money that i was supposed to inherit for me it doesn't matter now I can have and I can actually build the life that I want. And that's what Bitcoin gives to any single one of us. Which one's the best crypto asset? Well, Bitcoin's the best crypto asset. Okay. What's the second best? There is no second best. There is no second best crypto asset. There's a crypto asset. It's called Bitcoin, right? Right? There is no second best, okay? But take all your money, buy Bitcoin, then take all your time, figure out how to borrow more money to buy more Bitcoin, then take all your time and figure out what you can sell to buy Bitcoin. And if you absolutely love the thing that you're that you don't want to sell it, go mortgage your house and buy Bitcoin with it. And if you've got a business that you love because your family works for the business that's in your family for 37 years and you can't bear to sell it, mortgage it, finance it and convert the proceeds into the hardest money on earth which is Bitcoin. this channel is for education purposes only and is not affiliated with any financial institution this is not financial advice don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel now back to the episode 100 percent, i agree with that um so ivan i kind of want to talk about uh you know i guess you could say the lightning network but i really want to know more about your role as the chief of staff at breeze and of course, at Breeze, you're at the forefront of this lightning instant settlement finality. And for our listeners who may not be familiar with that, could you explain the basics of the lightning network and its significance in the Bitcoin ecosystem? Yes. We all know that uh, Bitcoin was attacked through all the crypto scams, that it is not sufficient for 8 billion people. And everybody knew this from the beginning. So we had to find a way to optimize the technology uh, to serve more people than uh, seven, se seven transactions per second, which is the average. And 
Uh, the Lightning Network is a protocol, again, open protocol, where it is pushing that limit much further. Uh, there are still optimizations that have to be done even on top of that, but this is the most promising uh, layer two on Bitcoin. And now it came to, uh, I would say, the acceleration part because people will not uh, have the money to make transactions on the first layer because of the mining fees will spike. But because now we have this protocol, the Lightning Network, that um, pushes down the transactions for payments much lower and it's much faster. You don't need to wait 10 minutes or more, whatever the next block is, or even more. Now you can have instant settlement. Even uh, now, if you present me with the QR code, I can pay without borders, without KYC, without anything between us. And it's going to be instant. Uh, so that is what the Lightning Network is uh, solving. It's an optimization of the Bitcoin uh, blockchain. And I want to say that unlike other uh, things, uh, Lightning is Bitcoin and Bitcoin is Lightning. It's not another uh, token or uh, something else. It is the same thing, but it is much faster and much cheaper. So uh, it can be used. Uh, in many more cases. Yes, thank you for that clarification. And, um, you know, a lot of people have to realize that the layer two protocol, um, a lot of people complained about Bitcoin in its early days about it not being able to scale. And I think that Lightning, of course, has created that solution for scaling. And of course, Breeze, which is the company that you work for, um, they're kind of on the cutting edge of this technology. I would love to really know a lot about Breeze and its mission. So, of course, Breeze, like I said earlier, plays this pivotal role in the adoption and usability of the Lightning Network. Could you tell us more about Breeze, its core mission, and how it's making Lightning more accessible to everyday users? Uh, Breeze, the company was founded by three Bitcoin OGs, and they uh, really set on a mission to give uh, to transform Bitcoin, which was in 2013, 14, this narrative that Bitcoin should be store of value only, and it shouldn't be a medium of exchange, but it should be type of a banking system. But they said, uh, we have to transform this to be a medium of exchange to have the full potential of Bitcoin. Uh, and when they saw the Lightning Network white paper, uh, because they are technologists, they said, okay, this is the potential. And they bet uh, the future of the company on this protocol and not some other implementation. And luckily, um, they were right. But what Breeze does is let the Lightning Network to uh, be given to other people. It's very complicated. It's, uh, yes, you can run a Lightning node, but you have to have expertise uh, in hardware, in security, in programming. You have to be online all the time. But uh, if we try to onboard 8 billion people like this, it's, it's not scalable. So Breeze uh, frame this in a very useful manner. Right now, we are connected uh, in the internet. And what we do is I have a device on my side. Uh, I have a browser uh, and uh, I'm connected to an internet service provider. So uh, the same thing is with the Lightning Network. We have a device, which is a phone or something else. The browser could be an application. Uh, in this case, it could be Breeze, it could be any other that is connected to the Lightning Network. And Breeze serves this infrastructure play uh, that solves all the complexity on the Lightning Network and just gives you this send and receive funds. Just like uh, we are connected right now, I have no idea what happens behind the scenes in the internet uh, service provider, the cables, the routing of the information all the things that they have to connect to so we can uh, talk right now. And that is what Breeze is solving, but for the Lightning Network. That's what we, uh, the founders coined, Lightning Service Provider. In order um, 
for people to be onboarded, it has to be easy. And the technical part is taken by um, the company. As we kind of grow, we have the ETFs, we have all these things where Bitcoin has become like this, this like mainstream phenomenon now in the last few weeks. I think a lot of people, once they kind of get orange pilled, they learn a little bit more about on-chain transactions. They're naturally going to want to know more about Lightning because it's just faster, especially now with ordinals kind of blocking up the, the, the on-chain transactions, slowing things down, making fees higher. I think companies like Breeze are in a perfect time and place to implement Lightning, which is cheap, fast, reliable, secure. And a lot of people are going to want to transfer money peer to peer that way instead of waiting for an on-chain 10-minute block for a transaction to go through. So um, I applaud you for being at Breeze and kind of being at the forefront of um, this Lightning Network solution that not only Bitcoiners need, but the world needs Thanks. as well. And uh, I would say it's not as reliable that it's going to be in five years or in 10 years. But uh, when the Lightning Network started, every second transaction or so failed. And right now mm -hmm. we are above 95%. So the goalpost is near. Uh, we want to be at 99.99% reliability. So it just has to work. The user doesn't want to know why the payment failed. He just wants the payment to work uh, and not be bothered about it. So I think that this wave of, of adoption that is coming through um, the mainstream narrative to buy ETFs or anything, yeah, it's okay for the first world again, but because Lightning and other um, protocols are available, can onboard people that can't, and the wave of, of adoption will be much faster and much broader. So I think that this cycle, we will have people that know Bitcoin uh, only from uh, the Lightning Network first. Maybe after a year or something when they accumulate uh, some uh, SATs more to put them in a hardware device or in cold storage. But uh, when we have the Lightning Network, the third world countries probably are not going to need even the first layer. They, uh, they don't think in uh, store of value in the money. They just want to be able to use it and not be robbed by 44% inflation or 100% inflation and stuff like that. And that's why I say that uh, the more and more layers become reliable and available, more people will be onboarded much easier. And all this complexity, even first layer, UTXO management, all sorts of things, uh, it's going to be when you're really deep and when you have to protect a bigger stack. But we just want uh, money and we want to use these money for whatever product or service that we want to buy. You know, you're adapting to change and Breeze is aware of that. Breeze is aware of some of the pain points and problems that uh, Lightning can create. But for the most part, it seems like Lightning is a surefire solution to a lot of the um, payment chokeholds that we have in, in our current fiat uh, monetary system across the globe. Um, but I wanted to ask you, Ivan, about the importance of kind of adapting to any situation. So how has the philosophy of what you push at Breeze and just your, your philosophy as a Bitcoiner, how has that influenced your approach to development and innovation at Breeze, especially in such a volatile and rapidly evolving space? I would say that uh, just because we are a lightning company, uh, we are actually everything that is in Bitcoin is almost a perfect free market. Uh, the mining uh, companies that are on the first layer, it's brutal. But I wouldn't say it's brutal, but it's a free market. The free market itself is brutal because you have to compete 24-7, 365. And that is what the uh, free market does. If you insert regulations or you insert any type of thing into the ecosystem, some people will not compete as hard and other people will be pushed, up, pushed out forcibly, not because of the competition. Competition itself uh, pushes out the worst performers. 
uh, but uh, with regulations or with money printing or other stuff that are unnatural competition, it's uh, the best are not really the best, the high, uh, the most uh, that are earning. And that same dynamic uh, in the mining is happening in the Lightning ecosystem because we are a Lightning service provider. We have to provide that 99.9% uh, reliability because even, let's say, uh, we do that for two years and we don't optimize the technology that's happening behind the scenes and then we drop to, let's say, 80% or not even drop. But let's say we stay at 95% reliability, but other lightning service providers deliver that 99.9. Uh, we are just going to be outcompeted and people will naturally uh, transfer to where they are served best. And because of this natural competition, you have to constantly innovate uh, and be on the cutting edge because there are no days off. Uh, you have to be online all the time. You have to adapt the technology. You have to watch for the network. You uh, have to serve your clients' needs. And most needs are not even <clears throat> open yet because we are still very, very early. But that's what I would say. Because we are in a free market competition, there are no rest days. We, you have to compete globally all the time. So either we are the best and we stay in business or somebody else becomes the best uh, and we are out of business. But in both situations, the users still benefit because if Breeze continues to exist, great. Uh, but if we are outcompeted, the users will have a better product at the end. And that's what we want. We don't want some type of regulations where some users have a worst experience because of whatever other circumstances. Yes, I agree with that. I think that that makes perfect sense. And from your perspective, like, what is the current state of Lightning and how close do you think we are to seeing widespread adoption? Uh, well, I would say that you can't time this. Based on the technology itself, we're... Uh, I would say we are poised to scale a lot because uh, one of our uh, companies in the Lightning Network published a report where in the two-year bear market, Lightning grew 1,200%. So 12x in payments uh, where Bitcoin is going down uh, against FUD, against everything, and in price most important. Um, two years ago, Lightning was not what it is now. Right now, when the really explosive bull market comes, it's going to be a front and center attention and a lot more people will come. It will stretch the technical abilities of the Lightning Network and uh, all the companies that are building. And we will see where are the limits. Uh, and we have to build on top of them. We have to push those limits even further. But uh, I would say that the Lightning Network is just getting started and we're, even in the current state, we are much, much better uh, in, let's say, um, sending money via MoneyGram or uh, some service like that where you pay, I don't know how much fees and you have to do KYC and then you have to ask for permission if you're sending in another country. Now, you don't need permission and all sorts of things, but we are just going to be constrained by uh, how many people like to use it. And just a small statistic, uh, Visa can process 24,000 uh, transactions per second. The Lightning Network can, can process between 20 and 40 million. So that's just one a reference point for what will be available to all of us. Yes, thank you for those stats. I think that that's important because a lot of people that are in the fiat mainstream world have no idea why that is important, why speed is so efficient and effective in the finance world because the longer something takes to transfer to be sent from one merchant to another is where you get the big price gaps, the big fees, 
And the faster something is transacted, like Lightning, for example, is the reason why the fees are so low, is so cheap and easy to transfer pair to pair because it happens almost instantaneously. So um, thank you, Ivan, for giving us insight on that. But I wanted to kind of talk about some future developments that Breeze might have on the forefront. So looking ahead, are there any upcoming features or developments from Breeze that are in the pipeline that you could share with us? I would say that this year we switched our focus because uh, a lot of people know us in the space for our application, which was a wallet. Then we added a podcasting player in the same application. Then we added a point of sale. Uh, and every time that we added a new feature, and a new experience, uh, we grew 10x in the usability of the application. And uh, from this, we understood that we need more use cases. We don't need more Lightning wallets or Lightning apps. We need more apps that are integrated with Lightning. And this year, we switched our focus from being an application to being uh, uh, infrastructure a company for the Lightning Network, what I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, when I said that you need a device, a browser, and a Lightning service provider, uh, we were servicing two of those points. And the application was the browser itself, and uh, we were serving the Lightning service provider. But now we're focusing exclusively on the Lightning service provider, and we're building a ser uh, software development kit which, uh, which is an SDK that any developer out there that can build an application can use our code, don't know about the lightning complexity, what I talk about, but Im implement it in their application. And let's say uh, this button is uh, in the application is send funds. This one is receive funds. So this is the point of sale system that they create even better than us. This is another podcasting player better than us. For example, CrowdHealth is using, using our SDK and they'll do uh, health insurance. Satimoto is an application that is using for electric vehicle charging stations, all sorts of use cases. And now we can scale uh, for where you need to send money permissionless. And uh, uh, this is where we are focused now. We, uh, we still develop the application. Uh, so we can test it internally uh, how things work. But with this uh, software development kit, now anybody can build on Bitcoin and you can build an application for 50 people that are your group and just plug in the code and yeah, we take care of the actual uh, sending and receiving. Benefits. Nice, nice. Yeah, I know a lot of people that use CrowdHealth. I didn't know that you guys were on the back end of the SDK for that company. So that's that's awesome to, to, to know and hear about. Um, Ivan, I want to hear and know a little bit more about kind of your personal insight on Bitcoin. And what I mean by that is throughout your time in the Bitcoin space, what has been some of your most significant learnings or revelations, such as how you view Bitcoin or its potential impact on the world? How has that evolved? Uh, I would say that this is the first topping ever that uh, it captured me for such a long time. And uh, when people say that uh, there is no bottom of the rabbit hole, they're true because money touches everything. And on the other side, energy is life. So everything is energy. And those two aspects are integrated in Bitcoin. And uh, you can comprehend uh, where you can focus and you can focus it on uh, your location. You can focus it on based on your experiences and stuff like that, but it's impossible. That is one of the things that really captured uh, me and humbled me because I never thought that I was a dumb person. And I was always learning, reading books, uh, watching podcasts, uh, all sorts of things and trying to improve myself, whether in business, whether in relationship, whether in health or all sorts of ways. And when I found a topic, I figured it out, let's say two days, a few weeks, a few months, maybe a year. 
And then I say, okay, I'm sufficient enough. And I go about uh, uh, practicing what I've learned. But this thing, because it touches absolutely everything, it humbled me to really understand that I knew nothing. And uh, now I just have to focus on what I want to facilitate. What am I uh, best positioned to really understand deeply and uh, to be that message uh, for the world, to be this facilitator of that mission or that work that has to be done. And this is what really changed for me because previously uh, I still wanted to contribute. Uh, it was never money first for me, but I wanted to contribute and money was secondary. But now that money is part of life, uh, which is Bitcoin, I completely ignore the money and I focus only on the mission because this must happen. And because we're in a free market, uh, I compete against everybody. And if I compete well, people will reward me for it. And when I completely uh, ignore the money, uh, I would say that is when I was fully liberated because I still have problems from my experience with my mother, with my sister, what we had to deal with. But when I completely ignored uh, the moneyness and if I'm losing something or anything, and I just focus, I need to build this future uh, vision that I have for my life. And now money is helping me, not robbing me. Everybody that I connect to is also uh, selfish uh, from their end. But if they're selfish, they're part of this organism called humanity. Just like if, uh, let's say, my heart is in the best condition, it's the best for my whole body because it's part of the organism. But in the fiat system, all the organs are against each other and trying to take resources from each other. But now Bitcoin really serves as this unifier of humanity. So even if I act selfishly, I'm helping you. If you act selfishly, you're helping uh, other people, like everybody that is in this network. And I would say this is a really pro profound thing. And I tweeted at some point uh, last six months, so something that fiat is the autoimmune disease in humanity and Bitcoin is the actual cure. Yes, I agree with that. And that kind of reminds me of like um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And I think that, you know, when you said that, you know, uh, Bitcoin for you is not about the money. I think that as you naturally evolved in your progression, your orange pill journey, um, I think people just naturally are looking at the price, they're looking at money, how much they can make off of this, how much profit, is it going up 200% for the year again? And then when I look at Maslow's um, hierarchy of needs, we have um, the need of belonging, the need of safety, um, psychological needs, self-actualization, all these different things. And I think that the incendric motivation for Bitcoin kind of fulfills those every single uh, needs that Maslow kind of has for just the human psychology of what um, we need to kind of feel confident and safe and um, um, motivated to kind of go day to day and, and, and stay encouraged to push the narrative. So, um, you know, I think that a lot of the people in the Bitcoin space that are not aware of it yet, I think as they evolve and become better at this asset and more well versed in this asset, that they will understand that their needs are not as um, based around finances or making money as they think it is. So I'm glad you gave that insight, Ivan, because that, that hit the nail on the head. Yeah, absolutely. And it's still a progression. Very few people will jump ahead. And I said, I, I jumped ahead because I had this experience that was really, really deep for me. And, uh, but even if you start from, okay, I don't have money to eat. And now because of inflation uh, in Africa, or I don't have the freedom to actually buy stuff because I don't have a bank account and I'm limited to my own hands and stuff like that. Uh, if you start there, uh, you're quickly going to realize your basic needs and then you're going to move a level uh, deeper. And then, uh, 
no, no deeper but uh, higher and then uh, higher and uh, I really like Jeff Booth uh, and he says that it will be a consciousness shift just because of that because right now it's completely on the opposite because of this inflation it impacts us uh, all the time and right now it's just like a virus in our body that is sucking our energy out and we don't know where it's coming from and we have to mitigate all that processes uh, with all sorts of complex stuff and that virus is increasing more and more in our body we don't cure it but we uh, we just take a painkiller uh, here and there uh, we, and we go around again with this virus but now that we're going to uh, stop declining in our needs uh, and we're just going to build and uh, it's going to be completely transformational because it's not only going to be around doing work but the human experience I would say will be complete, completely profound uh, and we're seeing glimpse of it because I started a Bitcoin meetup in my city and when I uh, started and connected live with other Bitcoiners, the conversation is completely different. We don't care about the money. Uh, we talk about stuff that are really, really valuable personally to us and we figure out life. Yeah, we might talk about price this or how a particular hardware wallet works, technical details, but we really talk about how uh, I want to achieve this in my life because it will serve uh, better for humanity. And we try to figure those things out. And now imagine that we have that for 8 billion people. I think going to Mars will be the easy task. Yes. Um, so what about like some advice for enthusiasts? So for our listeners who are, are passionate about Bitcoin and the Lightning Network, what advice would you give to those looking to contribute to the space, whether it's through development, research or community engagement? Uh, I would say this, uh, just like Bitcoin is an open source protocol, work is an open source protocol. So do not ask permission to do work, but just go and do the work that, first of all, feels valuable to yourself first. And you want to give that uh, because you can go approach, let's say, a Bitcoin company and you can apply for a job, but this is really asking permission. Now think about the reverse. What if they are searching for content creator? Now, you start a podcast, you create uh, advertising something or anything. You just start creating a content for that same company without asking them for permission and put it out there and see how long it will take for them to reach out. And because we're so early, uh, I would say uh, it's a very high probability for them to reach out, especially if you tag them and stuff like that. Uh, your content, uh, it's, it's coming from the place I want to give first and then I want to find, is there a market for buying this? Uh, this is the right approach. But now in the fiat system, we are trained that we should ask permission to go to work, that we should receive first before we do any work, we should uh, lock in our salary or lock in anything. I would say uh, if you're in a position where you can't feed yourself, yeah, don't quit your job. But on the side, definitely uh, approach just like Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not asking anything from anybody. It's open source out there and whoever wants jumps in. Work is the same way. Find out what are your capabilities and just start giving that value to the market. And especially if you do good, uh, that company will approach you or another project will approach you or a contracting or freelance, all sorts of opportunities will come. And it's not going to be, oh, I work in one company, but maybe you find yourself that 
a lot of companies want to work with you because you really create that very good content or uh, marketing or whatever they're searching. Awesome advice. Awesome advice. And, um, you know, I think a lot of people are hungry to get into the Bitcoin space now. They're looking for their niches. They're looking for ways to kind of bring some value to the market because this is a value for value protocol. And I'm, I love proof of work. I love the fact that um, you need to prove that you can actually do something of value to get a reward for it. Um, that ethos goes throughout the protocol, throughout the ecosystem. And I think that that is a reflection of the people that find themselves digging into Bitcoin. They find themselves working harder than ever, but it doesn't feel like work because it's something they're passionate about. It's something that they love. So I, I agree with you, Ivan, that um, this space is is unique. It's different. We're still very early, even though people think because the ETFs are live that, um, you know, the bankers are involved now. So it's kind of over with. But I think that we're just getting started. This is all a part of um, Satoshi's plan. And he, he, she or they had the foresight to realize that eventually the banks would capitulate. Eventually, Wall Street would capitulate. Um, the world will eventually capitulate and realize that uh, Bitcoin is, is here to stay and it brings real value to money into how we approach kind of wealth distribution. So, uh, you know, I, I give, you know, 100% kudos to you for everything that you're doing with Breeze, with Lightning. And I just have one more question, Ivan, which is um, vision for the future. So, uh, you know, how do you envision the future of Bitcoin in the Lightning Network in the context of global finance, technology, and society? What role do you see Breeze playing in this future? Uh I would say that I'll talk more broadly, not specifically for Breeze, but just about um, what Lightning Network is trying to accomplish. Uh, again, it will need third layers, it will need even further scalabilities, but I wrote uh, articles about instance settlement. And uh, these articles explain, and I found out that unlock the coordination between people just like we did uh, before banking. Because in, uh, let's say, 500 years ago, we didn't have uh, this banking system, this moneyness of stuff, but we uh, traded in energy, uh, this open protocol energy. And let's say our tribe wanted to eat. Then we coordinated and hunted down a lion or hunted down a mammoth or whatever it was. Maybe not a mammoth 500 years ago, but uh, we went and hunt. Uh, and if we didn't want to participate in that coordination, uh, the tribe kicked us out. Nobody is going to allow somebody that is not contributing uh, to the greater mission. And we, uh, I'm saying, is we are going to go back to that because nature didn't pay us, but every step that we did to hunting that animal was the payment itself. Uh, I could say it like this. If you want to build a house for yourself, every single time that you place a brick in the proper place, that is your reward. You're not getting paid for it, but you're getting the benefit of uh, what you want to accomplish. And they hypnotize us that we want to chase money. No, we don't want to chase money. We want to use money for what we want to chase. <laughs> so uh, that's why I'm saying that the instant settlement mechanism now is going to be uh, unlocked uh, with Bitcoin because we are going to get paid for the valuable stuff, but we are not going to pay it with restrictions. And we're going to get paid instantly. Just like in nature, every single time that you take a step towards your goal, that was your reward. But now imagine that if you take that step, but it's not your goal, but it's a goal for somebody else, you say, I want money because that's not my goal. And every step that you take, you're going to instantly receive money. Then you take another step, you place another brick, you create one wall, you create the roof or anything. You're going to uh, align yourself with nature that you're going to actually go and work, not wait for money. Uh, because that is what uh, we forgot, that we have to do work in order to receive value. 
and money is just one uh, one thing that could be valuable. <laughs> we could receive many other things. And the instant settlement, what I talk about in the uh, article series, uh, is that looking through this mechanism in the construction industry, how it's going to revolutionize this. In logistics industry, for example, uh, you're not going to pass money from me to you, to the delivery company, to the website company, but now you have split payment. So everybody can be paid instantly at the same time. And uh, then book publishing industry, so the writer, the editor, the narrator, all of them, again, can be paid instantly for each individual book. And other things, streaming money, for example, when you drive your car, uh, and let's say in the taxi, you're streaming uh, money for that service, or let's say in the cinema, uh, all sorts of things. And the future is very bright. And I love that we are going back to what we were meant to be, really contributing to this world. And the only, uh, I would not say that it's completely negative, but the worst actors of ours uh, will be outcompeted and they'll probably suffer, they'll probably die, but this is what life is. You either fight for your missions, your goals and your life, or you perish, but it will not be because somebody pointed a gun at you or somebody pointed uh, inflation at you. It will be because you were the responsible one and you did not do the work. Preaching to the choir, brother. That was awesome, man. That was like, I think so many people need to hear that hear that message. And I think that uh, my audience as Bitcoiners would really appreciate those heartfelt words. So Ivan, um, this conversation has been awesome, man. I really learned a lot. I think that people should really tap into Breeze and to see what you guys are doing over there with the Lightning Network. But before you go, could you give people your social media handles and any future endeavors that you might want people to know about um, in regards to Breeze? Uh, yes, I'm in uh, X uh, as NAKU2000, N-A-C-K-O-O-2000. Also in Noster, uh, I'm one of the two more public uh, people in Breeze, so I'm very easily reachable. So at uh, anywhere they can find me. And if you're an orange brother or a sister, you're always welcome. So even if it's not about business, I connect to Bitcoiners all around the world and it is just an awesome conversation uh, all the time. And uh, I reached out to somebody around the globe and I said, uh, I love what you do. Can I help, you, help in some way? Um, sometimes I can't, but sometimes I can. Uh, so yeah, I love the coordination and just step into this system. The biggest, uh, hardest thing is to do the leap. Once you do the leap and the second step is much uh, easier, the third one is much easier, and then you never go back. Well said, well said. Ivan, once again, thank you for being on the Bitcoin source, a Bitcoin conversation. I appreciate the conversation, the insightful words, the insight. Thank you, brother. Thank you for having me.